President Biden could soon make a highly anticipated announcement on a possible 2024 presidential run. I feel like he's done this several times. But anyway, the president reportedly followed through on his plan to talk it all over with his family on their holiday on the U.S. Virgin Island of St. Croix. But recent polls have shown the majority of Americans want someone else. And even some within his own political party are saying he should just step aside. If Biden decides not to run, it would open up the field. Names being floated, potential contenders, VP Kamala Harris, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg, California Governor Gavin Newsom. We've seen him flex a time or two here recently. But if Biden does go for it, some warn it'll be an uphill battle. You'll be 82 by the time that the election would roll around. And, and that's just unprecedented. And this isn't the senior bowl. This is really the toughest job in the world. And he's already shown that he may not quite be up to it. So uh, will he run? Probably. Uh, but will he run unopposed in the Democrat primary? Absolutely not. <laughs> Did you hear Governor Huckabee call it the senior bowl? Oh, my goodness. Peter Ducey is live for us at the White House. Peter. And Harris, we've been hearing more and more Republican possible contenders talk about how they are having very serious conversations with their families about 2024. But for now, President Biden is laughing off questions about re-election. The latest Fox News poll finds just 33 percent of those polled want President Biden to run for re-election. 64 percent say they don't. White House advisors have been telling us the president would make a decision after family chats over Thanksgiving and Christmas. Most Democrats do say that they'll stay out of the race if President Biden runs again. And we know this president is also trying to manipulate the primary calendar to benefit him by moving up states that he was strongest in last time and among democrats just now taking office he can count on some support i'm very excited for uh for for president biden to to uh to uh run for re-election we are going to support him i'm thankful for the uh for the for the amount of times he's come to maryland and we've been told the first lady is fully supportive of a run but that doesn't necessarily mean that he's going to do it Harris. <laughs> That's true. Peter Ducey, thank you very much. Happy New Year to you. Good to see Happy you. Happy New Year. Recent polling shows President Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris are struggling. About half of voters say their opinion of them both is unfavorable. Peter just showed us a similar poll among Democrats, a big majority, 72 percent, saying they want a different candidate than Joe Biden. 28 percent have a specific choice. General Caldwell. Fox News political analyst Desiree Timms, former Democratic congressional candidate and CEO of Innovation Ohio. Great to see you both. Um, you know, Great to be with you. Desiree, I'm going to start with you on just why it wouldn't be automatic that the president wouldn't say, yes, I'm running again, because just a few minutes, just a few months ago, that's exactly what his answer was. Well, Happy New Year. Happy to be back. <laughs> happy New Year to you, too, and great to have you back. <laughs> President Biden has said time and time again that it's something that he was going to discuss with his family over the holidays, and now we're out of the holidays, and so I, too, expect an announcement to come soon. However, I do believe the answer is that he is absolutely all in in 2024, and I believe that all the Democrats and many Americans are going to vote for him again. The reality is we might have another President Biden, former President Donald Trump matchup, and I think the outcome is going to be the exact same. So, Gianno, how excited do Republicans get when they see someone who'll be 82 running? And all respect to octogenarians, I love a few in my own family. Um, but running for president is difficult, and it's already been somewhat of a challenge for him at times. Yeah, and I'll tell you, I think Republicans would like to see Joe Biden run, run again. I think the Republicans see him as the, the most likely person to beat. I got to tell you, though, there's only two scenarios where I think that Joe Biden doesn't run again, despite the fact that there was a December poll showing that only 19, 1, 9, 19 percent of people who would actually support him. And that is, one, uh, his health really and seriously deteriorates to the point that it can't be hidden. That and two, uh, FBI investigation reveals, reveals that he did something wrong with his son, Hunter. 
Those are the only two scenarios. Other than that, that I do disaster. believe that Joe Biden's going to run again, and that's not even a question. Yeah, from sad to a disaster. Real quickly, why do you think that the polling shows so few people want to jump out behind him, even within your own political party, and then we'll move? Desiree? Well, President Biden and the Biden administration, they have delivered. Uh, if you look at the polling, yeah, Democrats, some Democrats may say they don't want him to run again, but the reality is the policy wins have been excellent. It's the same reason President Donald Trump was inflammatory, but a lot of Republicans fell in line because they liked some of the policies. President Biden has delivered for Democrats all across the country, especially in Ohio, where I am, uh, primarily located. He's delivering uh, recently just on the Brent Smith Bridge. So there have been a lot you. of good deliverables, and I think that's what people are looking at. They're looking at the wins. He's delivered to his party. There's 76 I, I, I million agree other with people who didn't he has vote been delivering. for him. But go ahead, High gas Kiana. prices, inflation. <laughs> I said I got to agree with Desiree. He has been delivering inflation, high gas prices, and a number of other things, which I think most people would, would agree aren't good. But, yeah, I hear that. Uh, you know, I also caught that that was probably one of the few times that I've ever heard you or any other Democrat on this program compare Biden to Trump in a positive way. I mean, that was that was an interesting reach right there. <laughs> uh, of course Trump had policies that people cared about. Uh, less than $2 a gallon gas was delicious. Anyway, let's move on. Yes. Gas prices are down again in Ohio. Uh, oh, good for you guys. Not okay. food prices, though. No, I mean it, because <laughs> it's cold in Ohio, and we need heat. We need it. Yeah, no. Uh, critics often call on the president for repeating a whole bunch of tall tales. In fact, we had to scroll them because it's only an hour show. You can see them here. A few mentions his claim that he was arrested trying to see Nelson Mandela, that he was caught sneaking into an all-girls dormitory. There's also the one where he was a big rig driver and that he was politically raised by Puerto Rico uh, citizens, that he was there. Maybe the best, the president saying that Delaware has the most chickens of any state, but no turkeys, zero. A Washington Examiner op-ed argues, if we were punishing politicians for lying about their past, start with Joe Biden. Our own Britt Hume tweeted, Joe Biden's mind has been the home of the Whopper for decades. Gianna. Well, I got to tell you, the chickens have come home to roost. And what we've seen the chickens from time and time again, especially... <laughs> yeah, you said they have the most, which, of course, we're not going to hear much from the uh, Washington Post liar meter, which they had up when Trump was in office, or any, uh, no, any of these number of other publications, which they seem to kind of dust it under the carpet. But I'll tell you, this is problematic that the president of the United States continues to lie. And one of my, uh, one of the most interesting tales is he was raised in a black church which I don't believe that, neither does Jesus. So we got to keep it moving and be honest, especially as you've been the leader of the free world. All right, Desiree, I'm going to move to this, and I'll come to you first. Ex-employees not holding back on Vice President Kamala Harris, saying a deep, deep insecurity possesses the second in command. The author of the new book that includes the claim that the vice president would not answer questions about reports of a toxic work environment in her office Former staffers, however, more than forthcoming. One saying she refused to do the kind of preparation that you need to do before going public on a hardcore policy matter. And then she became incensed and outraged when things would not go the way she thought they were supposed to. There was a lot of magical thinking. That's a quote. They add that the criticism has nothing to do with Harris's race or gender. On the contrary. People take jobs with her to help her succeed despite the environment. Desiree. So, Harris, I'm going to do this again. Look, having former employees criticize their former bosses is nothing new. And we saw the same thing during, you got it, President Donald Trump's administration, where New York Times articles, the Bob Wilbur book, uh, to Donald Trump laying in bed eating Happy Meals and Hot Cheetos. I mean, the stories continue to go on and on and on. And so the slander against a powerful black woman who's been a, a senator, an attorney general, and the vice president is just not news. And she didn't get there because she is a slacker. Uh, they're not calling her out for her blackness. <laughs> that that actually no, doesn't slack. come up. She's had some of the most diversity potential type jobs, like the border. Uh, anyway, Gianna. Yeah, I, I would imagine that Kamala Harris is feeling a bit of pain about the decision she made to be vice president. She was a popular senator over in California, 
And she could have taken a job in the administration if she wanted to, but now she's been forced to take on some of these assignments, which are loser assignments for her because she refuses to get out in front of it because her boss in some ways won't allow her to. You, she can't fix the border issue because Joe Biden's not going to allow any policy to come mm. out to fix the border issue. And I don't know if she would even know how to fix that issue in a bipartisan way. So she has to feel a way about what's going on because she chose uh, a job that isn't being helpful to her career-wise. All right. Great to see you both. Happy New Year to you. Desiree. Happy and Giano, hope to see you soon. Thank you. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.